three of the most important factors to consider when you work out are the following. Frequency, how often I train my body or each body part. Intensity, how hard I train. And volume, how long my workouts last or how many sets I do per body part. Now, here's the thing. All of them are inversely related. You have to consider your recovery. In other words, if one goes up, the others typically need to also go down. You can't hammer all three or you will overtrain and your body simply will not progress. Most people fail to realize it. So intensity, frequency, volume, look at those, balance them out, and you'll get the best results. You know, I like to think of this like a uh, like when you're building a character mm. on those like uh, video games. Yeah, like their avatar bars of power. Yeah, and... it's like they give you 100 points and you can give like some to speed, some to yeah. power, some to whatever. And Skills. you can't, if you give them all to one, then you, you have none left for the others. This is how I think people need to consider uh, frequency, intensity, and volume. Now, I remember being, when I was younger and learning of the value of those, all I did was throw all of them at myself mm -hmm. at the same time, or I'd increase one of them without decreasing the others. And, um, and just, I would just overtrain my body would have progressed. A good example of this is like trying to bring up a weak body part where people just add volume yeah. to that body part without taking away volume from other body parts. And then they can't want, they, they, they don't understand why, their weak body part isn't progressing. It's probably because you're just doing too much all over. Well, I think that intensity and volume are the most popular, obviously. Yeah. Because, it, you know, and one being like intensity more in the athletic realm, performance realm, like it's really highlighted probably the most. And then like I got introduced to more volume training once I started hanging out with more bodybuilders and being in the gym setting a lot more. But frequency was like never even part of the conversation. Yeah. Like that was just something. Because it too, if you're, if you're training literally like every day and all the time, um, I mean, it's going to affect intensity or volume substantially. Like you have to really manipulate that in order to keep yourself surviving. Like your training. Totally. I actually think this is, um, maybe one of the more challenging, if not the most challenging thing to kind of piece all together. I mean, admittedly, this has taken me most of my training career to really find, uh, the right dose at the right time in your life too. Cause that's the other thing too. It's kind of a moving target. Yeah. Good point. Um, depending on your experience, your age, uh, just your, your current your, life, your current lifestyle yeah. with stress mm -hmm. and sleep and what you got going on. And so, you know, I, you, we, we can, we can talk about some, um, some basic rules of each of these and, and re, you know, refer to studies that show, Oh, you know, when you're in this range, this is most optimal, but you know, it's, it's, it's not only is it individualized, but it's individualized and it's consistently, um, moving. So this is something that I feel like uh, I, I still have to always go back and revisit. And I think for experienced lifters, and there's two different conversations here, experienced lifter and someone who's never lifted really before. I think with experienced lifters, we tend to uh, overdose. We tend to do more. Any one of these that we're talking about, frequency, intensity, or volume, when we decide to apply them, we tend to over apply versus, you know, doing as little as possible to elicit the most well, change. The trend tends to be this, right? I'm working out, I'll, I'll paint two scenarios, but the answer tends to be the same at the end and it's always wrong. You're working out, not getting good results. Okay, let's increase the intensity, the volume and the frequency. And especially if you're a workout fanatic, that's the wrong answer. Here's another scenario where we tend to give the wrong answer. Wow, everything I'm doing is working really well. I bet I can make it happen even faster. Increase the intensity, increase yeah. the volume, increase the frequency, and then my body plateaus. This took me forever, forever to really figure out how to balance properly. Um, I kind of started to figure out intensity and volume when I was younger because I went from traditional, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger style volume training to the other end of the spectrum, which is Mike Menser, heavy duty, super low volume, super high intensity. So I started realizing those were related. The frequency part took me a lot longer. That's when I started to read about training methodologies of like the bronze era, what they would say of, of, of strength training, you know, uh, like turn of the century where these guys were training full body three days a week. And then I realized like, okay, in order for me to do that, I have to really reduce the intensity a lot of times. What's going to happen? And then my strength and yeah. gains went through the roof. And then I said, okay, all of these really, really influence each other. And you really have to balance them out because the wrong mix uh, will give you no results. The right mix will give you results uh, every single time, but the wrong mix, and this is the beauty of, of workout programming, well done workout programs understand this. Poor programming don't understand this at all. So it's mm -hmm. not just about exercises and reps, those are important too, 
But these are like the the foundational things you need to consider and understand if you want your workout to really produce uh, you know significant results. Well, it's kind of silly to me with the frequency part of it because uh, I knew that just practicing skills for whatever sport it was I was doing, like the more I did that and the more often I would do it, the better my skill would be. And it's like to apply that same concept towards training just never was even a thought and wasn't even promoted by our coaches or anything else. And it's obviously you have to affect the intensity and the volume and you have to make it right dose. So that way it's like, it's, it's beneficial and you're actually going to receive that type of adaptation from it. Um, but you know, later on now in the, in the career now, I'm like, man, I wish I would have applied that to like in blocks of like, let's just focus on like treating my training as a skill and let's, let's develop that even further and mm -hmm. see how much better I can get at that to then benefit from that. And then just, you know, now let's go for this block of just intensity and like, see what that did and translated towards that. It would have been huge. Yeah. I tell you, if you're, a, uh, if you're into this and you really want to learn about this, the two strength sports that I think have the best workout programming, yeah. Olympic, uh, lifting. Olympic weightlifting is at the top. And then next would be powerlifting. Yep. And that's because they have to produce results. Olympic lifting is a competitive Olympic sport, has been for a long time. So lots of research has gone into it. And then powerlifting, also a competitive sport, more scattered, not as centralized, but still competitive. And then third would be bodybuilding. But if you look at Olympic weightlifting and powerlifting, you'll see that they, they understand how all of these are related. Uh, again, especially Olympic weightlifting, they really understand this to get their athletes to peak on, you know, day of competition. So there's a lot of stuff you can learn. Are there some general rules when you communicate this to like the average person, right? So you're, you're, we're throwing around words like frequency, intensity, and volume. If you're talking to your aunt, you know, or so that means nothing to them. Yeah. So <laughs> how would you, how would you break apart each one of those and explain the importance and give them the, the the fundamentals around each one of those points so they can then apply That's it. That's a good question. I would say with people who are uh, inexperienced. So yeah, let's take each one. So let's do frequency. I'm talking to somebody yeah. inexperienced. Uh, Here's some basic rules around frequency that you need to know. Okay. So with, with people who are inexperienced, um, free, I can, I can really apply a lot of frequency so long as the intensity is low enough. Um, and volume, I also have to kind of keep an eye on, but frequency, I can have someone practice a lot if I keep it really easy. I remember learning this with clients like, oh, I could have someone literally do something every single day. It just has to be really, really easy and they'll progress quickly. Part of that is the central nervous system adaptation they get and learning the skill, which is more important when you're a beginner versus when you're advanced. When you're really advanced, you've got the skills down. You still will, you know, derive benefit from frequency but I think intensity and volume are more important. Now, as you get more advanced, it kind of looks like this, like um, total volume per body part uh, will range 12 to 18 or 20 sets. Intensity, if you go to failure, you can cut that down by a third. If you don't go to a failure, you can, you can get up to the higher ranges. Frequency, depending on the intensity, uh, you can train your body up two to four days a week. It, it, now, it, obviously, there's a huge range here because of what you said earlier, Adam, there's such a variance from individual. So I think the best way to communicate this is, are you progressing? How, are you sore? If you're really sore, you're probably doing too much. One of the others is your sleeping affected. And, and generally do you feel good? If you feel good, you're not super sore, you're progressing, then you're, at, you're probably hitting close to the right mix, I would say. So I, I think I would communicate it hmm. similar. I mean, but less, less words. I think I would say what we know from studies that you know, let's pick a body part. Doesn't matter. Chest, back, shoulders, anything. So landing somewhere between 12 and 18 total sets for the week is ideal. What we know, the ideal you know, frequency of that is two to three times. Doesn't mean you can't go four or five. Doesn't mean you can't do one. But the sweet spot is hitting that muscle group two or three times. So I would divide the total, whether that be mm -hmm. 12 or 18 sets by however many days uh, a week I'm going to work out. And, I, and to your point around practice, I think a lower intensity and more practice is going to benefit you the most when you're first getting started. So instead of going into your workout, knowing that you need to hit chest 12 times for the week, instead of thinking I'm going to hit it one day and as hard as possible, you're better off doing it at 50% and spreading out maybe over three or four yeah, days. That's good. And you'll get more benefit by doing that, especially, and I think that's actually true for even a lot of advanced lifters, but it's definitely really true to the beginner lifter who's trying to practice those lifts. Yeah. yeah and try and leave those, I guess we say like the two reps in the tank, but like really it's just like, um, 
stopping before that true true fatigue sets in so that way like too you're you're thinking of the next day and the next training session you're already thinking ahead of like being able to fully recover and then having that energy going into the next so less is more especially in the very beginning yeah you know it's funny out of the three factors that we're talking about volume and frequency tend to be limited by time so those tend to be less abused in intensity intensity in my experience, is the most abused because For sure. I can hammer it real hard while I'm here. There's also that that warrior, you know, hero mentality. Let me beat the crap out of myself. That's what'll make it effective. And the truth is, I can overtrain somebody with intensity faster than I can with volume and frequency. I can overtrain someone yeah. in 15 minutes with intensity if I give them enough intensity. I don't it's care how. It's probably what I'm most concerned with with a beginner. Totally, especially. Well, totally. I, I think this is the reason why, you know, early on, uh, you heard us talking a lot about how much we didn't like the beast mode, all out, no days off uh, mentality that is um, perpetuated in our space. And that was a big message from us was it's the wrong message for most people. It doesn't mean that you can't gain value from, you know, getting after a workout here and there, but because of that mentality, the new lifter comes in and thinks they got to get after it to have success. And the the opposite is true. They're probably going to have more success if they dramatically reduce the intensity in their training workouts and practice the lifts and get good at it, especially when you're new and you're going to get newbie gains just by damn near doing anything. Yeah. So getting good at the form and technique and practicing it more frequently at a much lower intensity. And that allows you to go somewhere when you do hit a plateau, because it's inevitable. Everybody's going to plateau at one point in their lifting career. And so if I start out the gates with putting emphasis on frequency and consistency and l very low intensity, and then what, maybe after a month or two or three, I start to see my body really stall. Well, dude, I've only been going at 50% intensity. Now I'll take it up to 60 to 70% intensity and then 80 to 90% intensity. Yep. So I've got a lot of room to help break through plateaus because I didn't throttle down on the intensity button right out the gates. Dude, totally. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, the RGB bundle. That's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this video here on YouTube. Helps us with the algorithm, full disclosure. And also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all of those things and you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to that. Also, we're running a promotion right now. We put together a time crunch bundle that includes MAPS 15 Minutes, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Prime, and the ebook Eat for Performance. We put it together, discounted it $200 off, that means you only pay $99.99 for all of that. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, so um, I want to tell you guys that uh, a while ago, and I think we figured out the mystery. There's a mystery here. Uh, I saw a rat right outside of our studio, <laughs> and it was- They're back. It, huh? it was massive. It was like- uh, it looked like Splinter from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> it was jacked, right? I'm it's like, like those ones you hear about uh, in in like New York sewers. Bro, or something I already like. know where you're going. It looked this. like if you went to kick it, it would grab your foot and throw you. So I'm like, <laughs> wow, that is that is a jacked rat. Yeah. Anyway, last night we get a message from our assistant that the alarm system was going off here in the middle of the night. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Doug figured it out, and I think I know why. He went in the back where we have our supplements. Yeah. And the Creatures of Habit protein oatmeal like 15 of the packets had like holes nibbled in them. Yeah. And so the rat, bro. It's a jacked and expensive rat. Yeah. That's why the rat was so <laughs> jacked. Plenty of calories and protein. He's right? been eating all the freaking high protein oatmeal yeah. on the back, dude. Yeah, so, son of a bitch. Yeah. I saw him when I came in. So I came in. You saw him? Yeah, I saw him when I came in because I was the one to switch the lights on and the alarm off this morning and I saw him. He was scurrying around? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Shot up no. and out, out the other He's all Well, it's these suckers next door, man. The yeah. next door neighbors that had a shithole next door. It, oh, it just, like, they're they're attracting them like crazy. Oh. We gotta talk, we gotta talk about. But but I, let's stay on this for a second because you see the Doug. You can, I don't know if we put the camera on Doug's face. How excited he is! He <laughs> is the greatest rat catcher of all time. Yes, we had a couple here before. Rat killer, and he's back, dude. So I'm back. Yeah. How I'm long set up Doug, traps? How long uh, do today? We, how long until you think you'll catch this this? I hope eater. to have one by tomorrow morning. I wow. have to get the traps, so Are we setting an over under? You know where there's how many? One. There's many. You know, I have no idea, but we have pros coming tomorrow. Actually, uh, okay. actual real exterminators. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I'm gonna do my best tonight, and then we'll see if I can do. You it. know what Doug uses on the uh, for bait? <laughs> peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah. Peanut butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not it's, cheese. Oh, the the best trap so far that I've found, and I've had to get rid of them a lot, was 
a bucket of water. Oh, yeah. And then you have this spinning um, walkway. It's like a little landing run. And it spins. You put peanut butter on this. And so they get on top of it. They, and they eat it. And then shh, they spin. They fall to, to and drown to death. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. They, what do you mean? They can't swim? What? They, they can they swim they, until they, they, they get, but yeah. they can't climb out. Oh, you put them in like a tall bucket or something. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. like when they just climb right out. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was like a real yeah, trap. Like that. Swim, but. Oh, wow. so I had a so at one time our, I, uh, our rats here have a cheese intolerance. That's why they like peanut butter. <laughs> 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 this one's I'm telling you, this one's Jack too. Eating all the other creatures that have yeah, it. Yeah. I uh, I one time obviously health conscious rats. Here. I one time had to catch uh, a mouse in my house, and my kids were little. My older kids were little. And they're like, how are you going to catch it? And I'm like, oh, I buy a trap. And they're like, does it kill him? I'm like, yeah, it'll kill him. And they're like, no, Papa, please don't kill. So I bought a humane one. Oh, those Huge are worse, mistake, bro. Dude. Those are worse. It's worse hearing them scream. Wait, Screaming you, the ones stuff. that are like the glue trap? Yeah, dude. That's not humane. No, 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 oh, no, no. no, no. It was way worse. No, they like cat. bite their legs off. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't the glue. It was the one that trapped. But it was screaming because his foot was stuck in it oh, rah, 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 all night. Hell no. Oh, yeah, then you got to go God. smash it with a shovel yeah, or something. Yeah, dude. <laughs> way worse, I felt dude. so bad. I remember the first time I made that mistake, too. Thinking, oh, this will be easier. Yeah, better, go let them out outside. Be less gross or whatever. Yeah, no, not a good no, idea. No, dude. It was, yeah. a bad, it, was, it was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. speaking, of, speaking of, oh, so next door. Yeah. Adam was right again. Thank so, you for thank you for my flowers. So I, it's, this yeah. is great. So uh, I don't know how much detail can go. We had we have a neighbor moving, moving out. Or you don't have to evicted. tell. Yeah, we could delve without telling their business. All right. So they're, they're getting evicted and- they sell products in there. And Adam for a while is now like, how do they make yeah, money? Right. Like, how can they pay rent? And he goes, I bet you they're like, they're dealing drugs or something. No. And we're all like, shut up, Adam. You know, yeah. you always say that. Anyway, they got evicted yeah. and they found some shit in there. bro. Yeah. 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 They yeah. They found some drugs over there. Still, all well, it just means they were doing drugs. I mean, they're dealing. I'm like, bro, it, that means they're bad drug dealers. Yeah, you just, said. <laughs> yeah. just means they're bad drug Adam dealers. Adam knows a lot more about <laughs> drug dealing. <laughs> than I do. Okay. Their own product. Which is why I don't know that. why you were arguing with me well, for like months about this. You said, how, how do they pay the rent? I mean, they, they weren't paying the rent. Yeah. They did right? it long enough though to stay. For a while? No, they didn't pay the rent for months. They weren't paying for a long. Yeah, but Ever they were since... there for years, dude. We've been yeah, here but, for a long, long. Yeah, but COVID. I mean, yeah, no, before that, they were obviously paying yeah. the rent. But once COVID hit, I think they they had a uh, hard time getting rent from them. Yeah, so doesn't... my thought was if they're actually selling drugs, that they would have a booming business. Well, no, I are... Adam says he knows hella, but I, this blew my mind. Yeah, you, when you told me you know hella broke drug savvy dealers. Savvy business. Uh... You guys don't understand. Most drug dealers are broke. Because they just they spend on their own drugs. Yeah, we well, got to understand. Okay, listen. It, the same rules apply in the uh, black market world. Not the exact same, but there's some rules that that are on both sides, which is still the 80-20 rule, and it's still most businesses fail. It's still a business. It's an illegal business. But now just think, you have a lot of people that are uneducated doing that business. It's all, Doing business is hard when you're educated. It's even more difficult when you're uneducated. And you're also doing something and selling something that's you're addictive. You're tapping into your so own supply. I'm willing to bet that there is a greater fail rate business wise and success and, and in regards to business success financially in the illegal black market world than it is in the legitimate world. So are they just like, and well, that's my experience. My experience. Are is, they doing it? Do a lot of them uh, deal drugs to fuel their own habit? It sounds like, well, uh, that happens a lot, right? So what ends up happening many times is you get people that Cause you're um, just around it. All you, the they already like it, right? You're already into that. That's what got you into thinking, Oh, and I have friends that are into it. Maybe I can be a good dealer. Then you start dealing it. Then you justify why you can, take more of your product because you're making money from it. Yeah. That ends up being something that just supplies that, or, you know, there's still business principles that apply to scaling any business and they don't know how to do that. They get it. They make enough money to maybe provide for their own personal habits that they have and the things they like to do, but they can't actually grow the business. You, you know, you make a good point because there's hurdles in the, in the legal business world and a lot of the hurdles are regulations permits how do i you know paying taxes dealing with the market in the black market although you're not dealing with those things you are dealing with avoiding the police how do i pay these people off theft. how do i keep theft yeah. and then what how do i deal with theft because i can't go to the courts right you know how do i get my product smuggle you know launder so it's, it's got to be and then again even when you world. even when you start to have success say you're doing well as a drug dealer you're making good cash flow uh, scaling, scaling is still a problem. You can only do so much yourself as far as supplying, getting all that stuff like packaging, all the bull, same bullshit that applies and say our t-shirt business over here applies to in the drug dealing world. And what do you do? 
And then, oh, then you got to hire people and bring people onto your illegal business. Try finding, you think it's hard to find good employees in the fucking real world? <laughs> Try finding good people in the black market world. You know, so it's like, I got to find someone who's, who's reliable, lie, yeah. reliable, and yet, and, and get the balls to do something illegal with me and then not, not wrap me out. Like imagine how difficult that is. Wow. So yeah. So scaling, I would make the, I would make the argument. I would love to see if there's anybody who's got any statistics on this, but in, in my experience, um, it was just as rare, if not more rare, to find somebody that was really, really success. And and here's the thing that people miss. It like, makes total sense. Just you- because someone's driving a, a car with sick rims or has the cool watches yeah. or something doesn't make them really successful at business. So just so you see materialistic things and you go like, oh man, they're balling because they sell drugs. It's like, yeah, they they literally not take investing in any of that Yeah, cash. they take a little bit of their money that yeah. they do profit. And it goes right into things that, that makes them look. This rich, makes you know? so much sense because uh, you know TV and movies. Uh, actually glorify yeah. it quite a bit because whenever you see a drug dealer in movies and TV, although they always end up dead or whatever, yeah. they always end up making a lot of money. Yeah. You never see them struggling with their drug business. Totally not. You know what I mean? It's always like, we've got so much money. And I'm always watching going, bro, take your yeah. money and leave. You'll be okay. But they have I mean, like that's right. gold guns. Yeah. It was, <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of the things that really, it, this really bothered me. This is obviously my own insecurities and, and bullshit around money and stuff like that and my own ego that needed to be fed. But when I had a lot of success in the medical marijuana field, and when we did that, and that was a legitimate business, um, people still, uh, you know, didn't credit me for for what being we, good at business. Yeah, for oh. being good at business, and it really bothered me because it was just like, man, motherfucker, this was one of the hardest businesses I've ever built. And we had where people like, oh, of course you're making a oh, lot yeah, of money. You're selling product, drugs. Yeah, like, oh, oh, yeah, you're a drug dealer. You know? So it's cow. like, yeah. yeah. So oh, how hard could that be? You know, right. it's like, fuck you. Wow. <laughs> it's just as hard as building the business. You're right. If I, not harder, yeah. because the time that I got involved in it, it was very gray market. So, you, you know, the stuff that you had to do, the loopholes, the fact that we had, I mean, I things that I had to do in that business, I've never had to do here. Like having to, you know, rub elbows with, you know, politicians and, and city officials and go down to a city meeting, council meetings, stuff like that. I never did that for this business because I've never worried like, oh, they might all of a sudden shut down the fitness business and then like zone it wow. where we're at. Like you are people you're, steal product all the time, right? Like, oh yeah. You just accounted Fab. for that because it's like, what are you going to say? Yeah. Theft. Yeah. I mean, you, all this, all the same things that make this business difficult that had all of those things and more. So, you know, because it's drugs and everybody wants them, everybody thinks like, oh, yeah, it must be so easy. But then it's also extremely competitive because wow. there's lots of people never that consider that. Yeah, yeah. How how you don't have to go into detail, but how because uh, you did you rubbed elbows with these politicians and lawmakers in mm-hmm. the local area. How influenced are they by stuff like that? Is it really about who, you know? Oh, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, yeah it's definitely who, who, you know, when we I mean, part of what made my decision to partner up and go into business with the people that I went into is one of the, one of the big guys that was behind the scenes that was, his face wasn't a part of the business was already a centimillionaire and he huge, huge money. And he was going to, and he also was already deeply connected to like, I, I forget, I won't name drop, but there was multiple city officials that he was already in, you know, relationships with and you know part of the deal was when we were building the business like and we knew that those officials were influencing some of the law zoning laws and things were passed we knew the areas that we were targeting and so you know they're have they're having lunches now from the club level my job was when they came in and said hey you know, uh, so and so told me to come by here and pick up the check for you know donating for our campaign. Oh, I just wow. I just wrote the check. You know, what I'm saying so that was wow. my my part of it would be just that it's like I'm donating towards this politician's campaign. And remember, this is at a city level right here. This yeah. is not national. Yeah, so that would re- really op- add corporations involved. Yeah, right? and I'm only and I'm doing a you know we're doing You're a not few, Pfizer. We're doing a few yeah. million dollars. <laughs> exactly. We're not doing like baller crazy huge money. You know, and and I'm like wow, if we're already. You know, it, it, it part it, of this game, yeah, part level. of this at this level, and we're nobody. Like to think that that's not happening. Well, we're only paying them. I mean, how it's like a, like a hundred thousand a year or something for like uh, these politicians, and then you look at like their net worth. Yeah, and you're I know. like, wait, this doesn't add up. You know, it's like, of I course, think, I think the salary I want to say in Congress is like 175 grand or something like that. Yeah, and you know how many millionaires there are in Congress. Dude, they're worth hundreds of millions. Yeah, of like, like ten houses, five houses. It's stupid. And there's a lot of little stuff that. Do you remember that page? There was a page on Twitter years ago that got canceled. I don't know if they brought it back, but there was a page that followed 
Nancy Pelosi stock picks mm -hmm. because she outperformed every top investor that Well, her exists. husband was always making just these the, amazing, amazing the, picks. Yeah, dude. Well, That's I follow a page, right on point. a page called, and this is, we won't make this our shout out page because it's a little bit different, but you just reminded me of it. It's called Unusual Whales or something like that. Yeah, Unusual Whales. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's I called that yeah, page. Unusual Whales, and it follows all the politicians and all their, by the way, talking speaking of that, you know that all the executives for SVB Bank in February cashed out. Oh, a lot of them did. Oh, like yeah. five oh, of them. Convenient. Yeah, CFO, CEO, like all all these ex executives yeah. took out a, a big position on all their yeah, banks before him. I know. By the way, this is a this is a uh, what's the congressional salary there, Doug? One hundred seventy four thousand. Yeah, How do you make one hundred seventy four yeah. grand and then you're a millionaire. Yeah. yeah. Come on now. So um, this was a big deal here in in in, in the tech world because SVP uh, Silicon Valley Bank. It's been around, what, 40 years? It's one of the largest banks in the country, and they fund a lot of startups. So when that shit went south, lots of, one of the biggest companies, Roku. Roku had billions of dollars tied Roku up there. 400, 480, 480, 480 million. million. Part of that, yeah. Literally, when this happens, couple of the biggest you ones. can't get your money. Uh -uh. Your money is stuck. Yeah, so, I imagine this weekend that just passed had to have been one of the most stressful weekends in this area. You can't do payroll. Right. You can't do products. Yeah. And it's mostly because pe people don't understand. I, I mean, obviously, Roku was tied up in that, but and that would be considered probably a bigger company. But, you know, the Googles, the Facebooks, Twitters, these big, massive companies, they were fine. It's a lot of the companies that were 10 to 100 employees, yeah. you know, that are startups that had all of their. I mean, I just imagine, obviously, we, this company, bank we bank with Bank of America and Chase. Um, but I mean, imagine if that was bank of America, like all of our employees, like, what do we do? Like, yeah. you know, hope they still show up to work, even though we tell them, sorry, our bank accounts are all frozen and we don't, we don't know if we're going to be able to get all of our, our capital. And, like, and so the, the fear, <laughs> which this is still a fear is that this could be a contagion because, uh, there was such a secure, you know, quote unquote, secure bank that they're afraid that a lot of companies are gonna be like, you know what, why am I keeping my money in these smaller banks? Let me just pull it out and put it in these bigger banks that are safer which that's that's what that's what happened. You get a cause what's called a run of the bank. So do you, you guys remember learning? You learned about fractional yeah, reserve bro, banking. It's such a it is such a Ponzi scheme. It is ridiculous. The fact it's that the, crazy. It's the fact that banks are only responsible for hanging on to ten percent of all deposits, and then they're allowed to go out and loan out nine times the amount of your deposits. So just think about that for a second. Million dollars goes in the bank account. They only have to keep a hundred thousand of my million. To, to, to that legally in order for them to do business. Mm -hmm. They can then take my million and loan out $9 million to Which, other people. Which, by the way, here's how crazy it is. That $9 million goes to other people or a business or whatever. They put their money in the bank, rinse and repeat. Yeah. So the amount of money that actually exists that we use yeah. is Very so, it's so much larger than the money that actually, or should I say the money that we're using is so much larger than yeah. the money that exists. So right away, the Fed goes in and says, we're going to cover all of it. We're going to just cover all of it, which I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to stop potential. Yeah, runs they don't want to see the, they don't yeah, see the Lehman brother thing happen again. Yeah, yeah, dude. But this is this just this, this like a cracks in the. What do you think is going to happen? What's your guess right now? I mean, we obviously we've been, we've been saying this stuff is coming down the pipe and you can only print money for so long before all this. Well, stuff. the Fed's this not going to raise. Right? The Fed's not going to raise rates. That's what I think. I think the Fed's going to halt raising rates. So that actually comes out uh, any day now. Where yeah. check, check out when the, the next Fed r r rate raise hike is. And it was supposed to, so originally it was supposed to be a quarter. And now that they, then I heard it was going to be 50. Now this, they're saying, oh, they might halt it. Yeah. I don't know though. Because that's what's putting pressure on all these, all mm -hmm. these banks is these, these height rakes. So, but if we don't, then inflation, by the way, if they bail out these banks and give everybody their money, that continues to contribute Just to inflation. Just kick the can down the road further. And so then we're left with nothing. What are we left with? What everybody has to understand too is like, and I under, I get it. Like if you're somebody who's a small business and of. you would definitely want the, the fed to come bail you out and save you. So I could totally understand being on that side, but all the rest of us, I mean, it's, we're going to pay for this. It's not like, the, it's so funny how when things like this happen, everyone's like, Oh, it's okay. You know, the fed, nobody understands, like, you know what it is. It's, people, it's not like the money comes from thin air. Like well, y'all are paying for it. <laughs> yes. People don't understand inflation. It's a tax. Your yeah. money is worth less. Yes. It's the same thing as the government taxing you and taking money from you. It's the exact same thing. It's just people uh, are fooled by it because they think they have they still have their money, so they call it a tax on the poor. Uh, it's a it's an invisible tax on the poor. Pretty pretty wild stuff. We'll I see. was trying to explain that to uh, Katrina and my best friends last night about we were talking about home loan. Like they they actually bought a home a while back, and they have like two point five percent interest or like that. 
I'm like, you understand, like when you have a, a loan like that in an inflationary, when inflation is running at six to eight percent like that, you're literally making money yeah. off of them. Like having that loan, you get how that works. And like, they didn't understand. I'm like, yeah, well, just take like a million dollars, the two percent interest that you pay on that. Okay. Well, the if bank you had is a, losing. Yeah, the bank is losing four yeah. percent every year. So the, you're you're gaining that by having that. I was like trying to find a simple way to explain to people that if you have a loan right now, whether it be a car loan, whether it be a personal loan, whether it be a house loan, and it's under six to eight percent, to pay that off would be silly. Yep. Like you would never want to do that in a, a time right now when the interest rates are that high because you're technically making money off of them holding that loan yeah, for you. Dude, there's so. a lot of cracks in the in the seams right now. I mean in the in the system. We'll see. We'll see what happens because if they keep pushing it out, it's you're gonna see um, you're going to see the market correct itself. It has to. It's impossible to keep it floating forever. Yep. So we'll see what ends up. I mean, I think the most likely thing to happen is because of what we went through in the 08 crash with real estate, uh, what we saw with the Lehman Brothers and things like that. They're going to protect the banks. They're going to protect the housing market. And the way they're going to do that is by printing more money, taxing more people, and inevitably, with, except inflation. Yeah, exactly. And what inevitably, what's going to happen is we're just the dollar is just going to dwindle. Like I, in this decade, so including the last two years and the next eight years, I think we're going to see like one of the craziest. Like, the, like it's so. I and I, I imagine, you know, your parents, right? You talked about what your parents bought their house for, like thirty thousand yeah. or something crazy. Yeah. I, I bet you when they bought that, they could have never imagined that yeah. ho same house would be a million something. Yeah. That just seems. So yeah. crazy. We're we're now living in a time like that where in ten years from now you're gonna look back and you'll be like two million dollars yeah, for that crazy that shithole condo. Yeah. What? And that's just gonna be normal. Yeah. That'll be the new price point. Have you guys seen the chart of how much uh, value the dollar has lost since they went off the gold standard? It's no. like ninety something percent. Yeah. Oh my god! So like it lost ninety something. Maybe Doug can find it. Something ninety something percent of the dollar's value. Since they went off the gold standard completely, since they cut the last thread to that, uh, it's 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 been gone. So, and there's no fiat currency that's ever not eventually crashed. I think that's the scariest part when you hear fiat something. means tied to nothing, right? Yeah. That's, what, so, sorry, that's what's scary to me is that you know. And do you think that there's a there's a, a possibility or even a chance for us to reconnect it to something like? you know, oil or gold before it get, before it completely just dissolves. We can't because we're so, uh, it's too late. Yeah. now, two you know, paces out. Yeah. You know what will save us? The only thing this, I, I heard somebody talk about this. And I said, yeah, that might be it. The only thing that'll save this decline will be, um, uh, rapid innovation. If we can innovate faster than the money loses value, then we'll be okay. For example, if you look at, um, tech, you look at the tech market, uh, a Walkman, when it first came out in, I don't know, when did the Walkman first come out? 1980 something. Uh, this was a cassette player that you put, you know, you could walk around with or whatever. It was like $300 in those dollars. So today you can get a Walkman for like 10 bucks, uh, even though the dollars lost so much value. Why? Because we innovated so well and became so efficient that we can make it extremely, uh, extremely cheap. So that's the thing that'll uh, yeah, but maybe to, save okay, us. to that point, like mm. try and try and speculate on the the average person's you know uh, daily cost. Like, where are we going to innovate so so much that we could potentially save the dollar? So we've actually up? we've actually if you compare apples to apples uh, and account for inflation, uh, we still are better off today than we were before. The problem is people spend on more things now. So what I mean by apples to apples, you go to like 1950, mm. the average home had one car. Yeah. They didn't have a television. They didn't have a microwave. They didn't have internet. They didn't have cell phone. They didn't have. So if you compare apples to apples, uh, we're better off, except for the markets that are heavily regulated, like healthcare, education. Those are just those have outpaced uh, inflation by quite a bit. Yeah. So look at that. Since 1971, it went down 86 percent. Since 1999 percent. Hmm. So yeah. it's 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 like it's worth so much less. Yeah, so. well, I mean, it, it's healthcare would be like one of those industries. Like, I'm oh, trying that's to think a good point. Healthcare that, that's and a, education. that would be a massive saving. Yeah, that's because true. it bleeds true. so much. Like, it, and I'm wondering if if any of this AI stuff, which is overhyped, of course, but like if that's actually gonna. Here's the thing, though. Like in terms of the trade of that, of like it, you know making it more efficient for business owners and like the innovation there. Um, but will that 
also cost, you know, a certain amount of jobs, which then will kind of like reshift its way. That's the argument. But so far, um, it's opened up opportunities. But we'll use education as an example. I think we're at the beginning of a collapse of the traditional education system. And it's it's being forced by the cost of education. Mm -hmm. So I think for the first time ever, we're seeing less people enroll in higher education today. Yeah. Uh, then we have in decade for decades. Those are two, those are, I think, those yeah, are I think two, education is a big one. And that's because literally I could go online right now and learn whatever I want. Yeah. I can get any information I want online. I don't have to buy $300 books. You go to uh -huh. college, they charge $300 for a book. Why? When you can. So all, all of this is starting to fall apart. Yeah. And like, why would I go to college, take out a loan for $50,000 and then go make 50 grand as sure. a teacher. That doesn't make no sense. You know, what to, why yeah, there's so no if you're market coming out of high school and, and now you're looking yeah. at, you know, options, I'm sure like in terms of like the cost of, you know, the, uh, somebody like getting themselves into that kind of debt, like initially, and then trying to pull themselves out. Like, I'm sure there's going to be innovation. The I think, I think both what you guys are talking about, those are great. Examples. Now, the thing that worries me about both those is that there is, uh, there's a massive agenda to not no, allow the, the bureaucracy is massive. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, cause I technically, when you talk about Those are big Ted talks and YouTube stuff like that, that's our, like the stuff to disrupt school is already there. We don't even need to innovate. Nope. Yeah. It's, so right. the fact that we're not, and it still is, we're you know, still, who the gatekeepers are the gatekeepers are, uh, companies and industries that are like, no, we require, a traditional degree, mm -hmm. but that's starting to change. That's mm -hmm. starting to change. With yeah, I just saw um, what state. Did you guys see this? Who 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 talked about this? Was it Gary V? No, it wasn't Gary V. It was somebody else. I want to get. Oh, it was it Florida? Yeah, it was was it? Yeah. No, was it Florida? I think so. That They're, announced that like like they don't need to. Ha you don't need to have a, a bachelor's degree in order to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some states that are. Already, I think it was. And I know Google has these certificates you can get through them. It's like a six month course that mm -hmm. they'll count as well as a as a bachelor's degree, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it makes sense. I remember in the medical field, because I used to train a lot of doctors, they were telling me how there was a shortage of general practitioners. This is doctors. Because to, to go to become a general practitioner, you're going to graduate with a hundred something thousand dollars worth of debt. Yeah. And a general practitioner, you're going to graduate and maybe make a hundred something thousand dollars. And then, and this is, but this is after years and years and years of school. And they're looking at it, they're like, this doesn't make sense. I'm going to go into a different field of medicine that makes more money. Mm -hmm. So this is just what's, this is, it's going to start to, it's starting to fall apart. Um, hmm. So, and with AI, you know, how are they going to keep kids from not using AI to write their terms? And <laughs> they're not. Uh, term yeah, papers? No, they're be not. a part of our lexicon. You know, uh, speaking of things that are unraveling, um, there's a, a theory on the, uh, you know, online dating and Tinder oh. to unravel also, which is really interesting considering that, like, you know, we the watched- The statistics on that are crazy. Well, we just watched it go from, no, remember just like when we were younger and dating, uh, nobody met online. And then it went from like- you know, one in four and then like- Now it's a majority. Yeah, now yeah. a majority of, I think it's like three and four or something crazy now, right? Like most people meet online now, but then what's happened and I, what I thought was really, in, uh, who was talking about, oh, Scott Galloway's talking about this. And I thought this was a, a really interesting point. And you've made this point, I think, Sal, before, and, and it's the argument for monogamy over yeah. like a polyamorous or open relationship. And the, and the theory of why like, okay, so even though we're like, our, you know, if you read something like Sex at Dawn, they'll make the case that our, you know, our animal instincts is not to be monogamous, but yet we've evolved to be monogamous. Well, why is that? Well, in a society where you have, say, and let's just say a small, a small group, right, where there's 50 people and there's, uh, you know, 10 or 15 men, let's just say, that are in there, well, the, you know, 5% get the attention of of all the women, which leaves the other, you know, 10 men angry and wanting to overthrow the guys that are taking all the women. And so for us to flourish as society, it made more sense that you pick your partner, your wife, and you guys do life together, That which opens it up for everybody to be able to do that. We're watching this actually happen. In a market-based, uh, you know, tech app. Yeah. It's not forced. <laughs> it's not cultural. Definitely not cultural. Yes. Yeah. But if you look on there, They've done that, that women, if you're not six feet taller or, or, or higher, about 97% of women are not even going to consider you. Yeah. Now the average man is not six feet tall. Yeah. If you make less than hundred K hundred K a year, 97% yeah. of women aren't even going to look at you, even though a majority of men make less than a hundred thousand dollars. So, and so you literally have. It's like 4%. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. there's 1% of the guys don't even have to try and talk to girls. 5% might get a response. The rest are basically invisible. Yeah. And that's literally the statistics of, of Tinder. So you have all these women 
fighting for the attention of like a small percentage of men and all these men that are basically invisible. So the wow. irony of this is we're wow. literally watching out in modern time what probably drove us to monogamy yep. in the early days. Because yep. again, if you if you uh, subscribe to the theories around sex at dawn, it's, you know, our animal instincts is to sleep with and mate with as many people as possible. Okay, then why have most you know, cultures adopted this monogamous type of relationship. Well, the theory, the prevailing theory, I think, and it's a pretty good one, is that, you know, in a, in a society like that, the very one to 5% of the men get all of the women mm -hmm. and you got 95% of your population fucking angry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and so they overthrow and kill and you get war and all that. Sort of that. And so it's really crazy to think that we're watching that happen now in this digital this digital so, so how, what's, what's the movement now if you're not going to find somebody because it's really hard to just randomly find you know uh, somebody that you're going to connect with unless you're like pursuing a specific place like our nightclubs or like where are people going the, just then for this the statistics are showing that young people are dating less and having less sex they're just Especially not into men. it they can't yeah they're yeah. not having. They're not having. Right, you're having the again that the, the same percentage is. Yeah. Why, if you're, if let's say you're in the the upper percentage or right, the percentage that's getting all, you're gonna want. You don't care if yeah, you're a, you, if you're a rich, tall, fit dude. They're just like I'm tenders gonna, awesome. I'm you love go, it. Yeah, you love it. You're yeah. cool. If you're a young, attractive, if you're thing. a young, attractive woman, you love it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else is like, uh, this is why we need robots. What's going? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> gotta shit. service all these. Oh God, uh, don't incels. say, don't do that, dude. Say that, bro. That's terrible. That's how they justify that shit, bro. It's like, oh, that's why they happened. want it. Yeah, yeah it's, I like, know. it's too yeah, hard. You know what this really, what this points to is that we're so quick to tear down a fence without ever asking why it's up in the first place, right? That's the old, yeah. the, the, like the, cultural things exist. Now, sometimes they existed for a reason that no longer exists, but oftentimes they exist. And especially when you find them across cultures, across all successful cultures and have lasted for a long time. You know, it's easy to pick apart the, oh, well, that's not human nature. Oh, well, a lot of people cheat or whatever. Yeah, but it, it's it's there for a reason, and we should probably consider that reason quite seriously. Well, I bet you yeah. nobody saw that coming, though. Like, you don't, that I mean, that didn't cross my mind. No, they, they would have thought everybody would have been, have more, more access to more right. parties. Yeah, more, I mean, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, that didn't cross my mind when these things were coming. I thought it was, like, interesting. I, I thought know. maybe it might have some effect socially on the, the your inability to connect in person because you do everything virtually. So I saw some of those things, but... I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind. Oh, wow. You're going to get like a very small percentage mm -hmm. of men that get all of the action on here. And same thing that for women. A lot of sense. And yeah. then everybody else is just going to be frustrated as shit with it and have a, and like, and actually probably hate it, which you see memes about it all the time. Every, yeah. I posted a meme about it the other day and I we get like, we instantly so DMs. People deny going like, that. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that hierarchy, that uh, preference, like it, it's, it's just in our instinct, you know, it's like it, we're trying to deny like what is real, like right in front of yes, us. Yes. And, 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 and we are humans have this self-awareness, this consciousness, which allows us to recognize our animal instincts and to create disciplines and structure and to live differently. Because right. just to use an easy example, just to use fitness, my animal instincts are to eat everything that's palatable and to not move. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if I do that? Well, we know that that's a terrible life. So. Yeah. Uh, so, the, and this is true for all that stuff. It's funny. Uh, this reminds me of that, this, the statistics where they interview, um, women without children later in life and over 80% of them, it was not a choice. They just waited too long before yeah. they actually went out and tried to take it yeah, so that's seriously. Sad, so, that's sad. That's, yeah. Yeah. These, are, these statistics are interesting. I, yeah. I shared that on that, that page, that one comedian. A lot of people got mad. Yeah. It's still, it's, I it's still, just a true by statistic. the way, I'm still getting hits on that. Like that's every day I open up and there's at least two or three people pissed off at that stat. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, listen, I'm just pointing out that like there's a lot of people don't see that, didn't see that coming, you know? Yeah. Well, my animal instincts is to chill on the weekends typically and like not like <laughs> what happened do weekend, more work <laughs> over this. Like, dude, so- Okay, volunteering, it's great. Like, it's it's something that's rewarding after the fact. But, like, I didn't find myself... I'm already paying a lot of money and contributing towards, like, my kids going to gymnastics and, like, doing, <laughs> you know, like, really, like, vested in there. I'm, like, showing up to practices. I'm going to the meets and, you know, I'm, like, cheering. Uh, I didn't realize... Okay, so our gym, like, had to put on an event. And so I'm, like, oh, cool. Like, well, I guess, yeah, this is going to be local. This is going to be something that I can help kind of contribute and, like... 
uh, turns out we had to move our entire gym to another gym, a high school gym that was close by to, to be able to host it properly. Uh, because like we just didn't have the space and we don't have like all the seating and all like the runway wasn't long enough. So you had to move all the mats. You had to literally the whole- like the whole thing. So like this whole tumbling track is like, you have these, these steel, um, the, the bottom of it. Um, it, it's like these heavy, like steel contraptions that you have to like move. And then the mats that are on top of that are really thick and heavy. And, and then you have the trampolines and then you have like all the flooring and then you have all the chairs. And then you have like, so the entire gym, like we had to move from there to this place set it all back up the whole thing all over again and then break it all back down and then trailer it and then move it all the way back in so this was like over friday saturday sunday yeah and sunday so i so how many people were there to do this so there was like this was the cool part of it which was like i (laughs) was so i was so frustrated because like courtney was like well this is we have to do this and like she got totally taken advantage of because like she's a very much of a, a an organizer and like very like methodical about us and then so the coach Vern he he picked he up that. on that right <laughs> away he he's really good at finding talent you know and like he knows exactly like what you do for a living he knows who's the 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 con- contractors no, and she's the, the, the planner construction and guys buff. He'll move yeah. shit. he knows who's like you know gonna be the people person and like you know sign up sheets and So she was like, I felt bad for Courtney. She was there like the entire weekend, like way early too, like having to do all the stuff where you organize all of the awards that that they get. So like you have to print it like right there and and match it to the event that they won or they placed in. And so like all the way from like five to six to seventh place, you know, and like have all that printed out with medals, with ribbons, you know, attached and then like post results because like, you know, some of the technicalities of like, normally you have like a, a, you know, something to shoot it up so everybody can see it, but that wasn't working. So you had to like actually print it up and then post it on the (laughs) bulletin board. And so she was dealing with all that. Uh, But yeah, so we had like the entire gym's parents all working together. Like it was actually a a sight to be seen. It was like, it reminded me of, uh, uh, you ever watch like the Amish just construct a, a, like a barn in one day with like, with like hammers and like hand screws and yeah. And they're so efficient and effective. Everybody had like the one thing that they're focused on and like, they're like just cranking it out. We, I think we all just kind of, it was messy at first, but then we all kind of figure out our strengths. And then it was just like, it was so funny to watch. Cause you learn a lot about somebody when you have to work and volunteer and do all this stuff, like all at once, like who's like the, you know, just get after it guy. And like, you know, can just lift stuff and like get uh, forward and, and, and progress. Or who's the one that's like, going to sit there and think their way through the whole thing. And like, you know, really analytical or the one that's like the technical guy that's like, you know, wiring everything. And then like, you know, has all the tools or, you know, it's, it was interesting to watch kind of all the personalities mesh and everything, but like got it done, man. It was like, it, it, but it was what were you all weekend for? long. What dude. did you do? I was like the guy that was like the mule, bro, dude, the <laughs> mule, everything in my back. <laughs> Putting it together, load the mule cranking up. it, like just putting, just constantly like ripping stuff up. They saw like, those glutes, bro. They knew right what out. the mule he's doing. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> they saw Throw it on my back, dude. Load that like, dude up, right? Coach there. I got like, you. Coach is like, look at the posture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach you'll is be, like, you'll be lifting shit. Hey, he can handle at least four more planks. Bro, yeah. If you get in my way, it's it's a bad day for you. Like that's that was the mode. I had the the work hat on of like, dude, get like. Get out of my way! Yeah, wow. Like, what an How many cups of coffee done. did you have? <laughs> I'm so I'm so exhausted, you guys. Like I was like struggling this morning. Yeah. Well, like, you're really selling me on gymnastics, it. man. I'm telling you. Woo. The more I hear you talk about gymnastics, I'm like, yeah. God, I didn't realize. How, you know, it's, how thankfully it's just one uh, one time a, a year that they do this. But like, I wish we th- that he had the gym that was big enough so we could just host it there. We don't have to move the entire setup somewhere else, dude. And you, and your kids will never fully understand how much mom and dad. Of course not. Care about their care about them. Don't forget by Tuesday. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're already like, oh, well, yeah. that was so fun, yeah, right? Oh, doing yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dad, you know, he moved some stuff or whatever. It's cool. I don't want to do gymnastics anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, you're doing this forever. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was signed up for, man. It was yeah. crazy. Kids are great, bro. I but, swear, this this yeah. weekend we had uh it was just my my it was just challenging with the little ones. And my two year old is just he's going through the stage where he's he's starting to he's getting all these feelings, so he had to throw tantrums here and there. And all day we were just challenged and 
tw- at the end of the night, at the end of the night, when I'm ready to look at him and be like, I'm, you're going to move out. I'm going to kick you out of the house. Now we're done. <laughs> then he decides to become loving, yeah. happy little boy. He's playing with us, joking around. And I forget all about, I talked to Jessica. I'm like, it's so funny. Two seconds of him being loving and happy and smiling and forget being about cute. Their rest of forget stuff. about the entire day yeah. when I was contemplating whether or not I made the right decision to have kids, yeah. more kids. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. Even the little one, even my three month old, you know, she'll have a day where she just has trouble sleeping, and you're literally like, <clears throat> first of all, uh, putting an infant down to sleep can be one of the most frustrating and infuri- infuriating things of all time. If they're having trouble sleeping, it's like. Ugh. It's like yeah. trying to, uh, to, it's like being in the bomb squad mm-hmm. and there's a bomb that you have to take the wires apart or it's going to explode. You're literally handling this baby like perfectly. And then you, oh shit, it's been 30 minutes. Oh, she finally fell asleep. And yeah. then you go to put her down so slowly and then you move the wrong way or you hit a, or you step on the floor wrong and it, you know, creaks yeah. or your toe cracks. Baby wakes up. You're like, you want to pull your and hair out. And then certain screams, it feels like shell shock. You just like, oh, you can just sit there and take it. Oh, <laughs> so I, I was doing this because I was trying to give Jessica a break because she handles most of this. And I'm like, honey, let me do all of it this weekend. Please, you need you know rest or whatever. Even though she's handling a two-year-old, so she didn't really get to rest. But I'm putting her down and I'm doing this and I'm like sweaty because I'm hot because we got to keep the warm room for her. And I'm trying to do this whole thing and it's taking me forever to put her down. And then I finally put her down and I turn around and I slowly walk. My toe does the, the crack or whatever. And I hear her moving and then she starts crying. And I'm like, oh, and I go to pick her up and she smiles at me. I'm like, oh, it's all good. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, are there, so because this is the second one you and Jess have had together and you ran them back to back like this, are there, are there certain things that um, you guys look back at what you did with Aurelius that you're, you're, you make sure that you're doing different? This time, like are like with sleep routines, with feedings, um, with I mean, I, whatever. Like, are there certain things that you're like you're doing different now than what you did with Aurelius? Well, that's a tough one. Um, I got to think about that. She's actually a lot easier than Aurelius was. He was more challenging, but it's still more challenging because we have a toddler at the same time. Sure. Um, God, that's a tough one. I think her crying doesn't trigger Jessica nearly as much mm. because you know, you know, first time mom mm-hmm. and you're like, you, you freak out. Yeah. Sure. So she's calmer about it. Yeah. So that's different. Um, I'm way more involved with putting her down than I was with the Aurelia. So that's a little different. Okay. And she actually, you know, with what I'm saying, she still sleeps a lot easier than her. Aurelius was really, I mean, I don't know. The kid didn't sleep. Yeah. Um, I remember you guys ha- hired a you like expert. You had a sleep to, expert. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To protocol help. for that. Yeah. So, so she Dahlia is a lot, a lot better in that regard. And at night she's pretty good. Although she wakes up every two or three hours to eat. Um, so I'm trying to think if we do anything differently, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I yours are so, calm, so much older, Justin, do you remember like fundamental things that you did different between the two boys? Like as far as they're raising, like, um, like I think, I think of that, right. If we were to have a second one of like, okay, I could have done that better. Right? Yeah. I'll do less of that, more of this. Like, yeah. I, I think, I mean, it was definitely like, um, a little more lax with, with Everett. And I think in terms of like certain things, we weren't as like, it, again, like that scream thing, like yeah. affected us, you know, a lot more with, with Ethan for sure. But I, there was different t- challenges between the two kids, like thinking back. Cause I remember with Everett, it was like traveling was really difficult because he just did not like who, what kid does not like to be in a car seat. Yeah. Right. Isn't that funny? I was like, Dude, some kids crazy. Some like, kids sleep in the car and some kids will not sleep in the car. My older two kids, my oldest son, yeah. slept in the car no matter what. My daughter never would fall asleep in the car. And we have one of each again. Yeah. Where one sleeps in the car and one won't. Yeah. So it's like, please, I want to yeah, match Ma- up. Max so, loves the car seat. Yeah, yeah dude. It's, it's not crazy. always that way. It, that's what was Ethan. And so it was like his thunder vest, you know, it was like snug and like yeah. anything that was snug and like I would wrap him like yeah. and he, it would calm him down. Everett's completely opposite. Like he he feels like claustrophobic trapped. and yeah. trapped. And like he's always like he doesn't want like all of that <laughs> like tight and restrictiveness right and so he's he's like the free bird you know like i have to like free range sort of manage him way more than ethan ethan's more like you know tight knit and like we got to stay on top of like everything he's doing like with everett it's like the less is more and like kind of like build these sort of barriers around him more so i don't know i tell you man you can't this is why it's like you can't become a 
better parent without becoming a better person. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. You ha it challenges you to the point where you like you have to become a better person. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just gonna. It's not gonna it's work. It's every insecurity you had. Everything. Every yeah. it'll it, uh, the stress will press. And then of course, why do you move forward with it? You love them so much. So it's just like it makes you grow <laughs> so much. I don't care how old you are. By the way, I continue to grow with the little ones, even though I have you know older kids. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we have uh we have Caldera Labs today as uh one of our commercials. And did you guys see the uh, video they did? I shared it in the group thread. I don't know if you guys watch because I know it was over the weekend. I can't, can't get you guys over to watching the assembly you know, weekends. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was in the thick of it. Well, and it was probably like one of our sponsors. If you guys were like, "What the fuck is this? Why am I gonna watch yeah. it?" But they used a, it. Was it? I thought it was a really clever uh commercial. What they did was like, you know the. Obviously, they're on social media, so you get all kinds of negative comments, as everybody does that has a business on social media, of like, you know, oh, men that have, you know, uh, use face cream or this. Oh, I saw you post Yeah, that. it was a ton of like shit oh, making fun of guys. Yeah, yeah, and they used all those clips, you know, behind some music, and then they showed a bunch of people that are sponsored by them, including us, and so like that, doing like manly things. And so I thought, <laughs> I thought that that's, was- That's good, yeah. No, it was a clever- oh, that's great. I, I always think it's clever- It is the jab. I mean, even like tongue in cheek, that would have been my jab jab initially like, what beauty products you know like who who gives a shit like yeah. but it it again to like all these other factors of of um you know guys really having like again skin issues and and also too just like wanting to look better like it it makes massive difference it's easy too yeah yeah you just you just it's not invasive you just rub the oil just, in your yeah. face that's it that's well i think that's the key is that it, that's why guys can yeah. adopt it if it was like a whole process yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yeah here's exactly. your six step beauty <laughs> you gotta exfoliate no, yeah, 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 yeah. no. You ever <laughs> what seen are the, these words you ever yeah. seen those memes where it's like uh um, where they show a shower and they see like a woman's side oh, of the shower bro that's our it's like hair face <laughs> hands you know that's uh, a, that's exfoliate a, that's and then a, the guys is like it's like just a bar of soap yeah yeah washes everything bro that is that is i used to do that like yeah. You wash your hair with yeah, bar soap? I, when I was in college. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was poor. Of course he does. You're such a I didn't give a shit. I'm just like, dude, ah, you know, like I didn't want to He's be the one stinky. who like loved when they like came out with like yeah. the, the all-in-one thing, you know, you just <laughs> score it, top his body, just do the whole thing. Hey, you know, he washes the dishes shit. with it, then he washes <laughs> yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the whole thing, right? Dude, less is more. That's you, so are Low you guys maintenance. wise like that? Like that's a that's a fight in our house for sure. I I can like I have like my little corner that has like three things that are all organized and tight, and there must be 60 bottles. Bottles in our fucking oh. shower, <laughs> sixty, dude. Yeah. Not exaggerating. You should it's see my insane. It's you should like, see my son. What are you doing in here? That you need so all mad if I use her shampoo or whatever. I'm like, oh. I ran out of mine. I'm just like, oh, and then use her. It's like you know, eighty dollars or something yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, hey, yeah. she, you smell like my shampoo. Like, I mean, she's so got mad. like <laughs> my girl's got like literally like five different shampoos and conditioners, like for different. I don't know times of the year for her hair or seasons or <laughs> smell looks or something she's right. doing or how close it's could to the different haircut, the hair color. Like, yeah, it's like, different what? why? Why do you need shampoo? this many different it's, bottles? You should see the shower know, my dude. son and daughter used. My older, my older two, because my son will have like he has one thing that he uses. Yeah. Everything else is my younger daughter because now she's thirteen. So now everything. She's got to use every single yeah, they, product. Yeah, they must be born with it then, right? It's not even like a, it's like a top. Well, they're like, they get marketed to so hard with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and they're more concerned with, uh, with of course, appearance and stuff like that. There's more value placed on that. So there's, there's that. And they're marketed heavily with products. Like go to look up any skincare, hair care product, and nine out of 10 of them are for women. One out of 10. I still can't figure it out mm -hmm. though. Okay, you have shampoo, you have conditioner, you have soap, you have face cream. What else could you have? There's like 10 million different versions of each. What else? Yeah, I don't know. I that's what doesn't make sense to me. It's like, and that's a lot right Elixir there. Elixir. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you, I just make words up <laughs> and you put it in a bottle. This balances my skin. This this is for wrinkles. This is for, I don't uh, know. Hey, uh, Caldera, the, just the oil potion. by itself. Uh, my wife has gotten rid of a ton of stuff and just uses that now. That's true, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah that's no, true. I know I've gotten all kinds of great feedback from it. I think the last commercial we shared, that person who who had sent back that was like life changing for them. That had all kinds of like skin issues oh, yeah. and like that, yeah. and then they started using Caldera. It's yeah. been no, it's been a great, it's yeah. been a great product. Who's got a shout out today? You got one? Yeah, I got one. Uh, in fact, I just I referenced him in this episode where I talked about his and it is um, Scott Galloway. He's the author of The Four, which is one of my favorite books. Oh, it was a great read. He's he's actually written another book I want to read. I think I shared it with you recently. His Instagram handle is It's right there. Pro, pro, prof Gallery. P R O F Yeah, Prof like Professor. So P R O F 
Galloway, G-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y. So he's got some pretty good content. Also, what I was referring to with the whole Instagram thing, he had a, he had a good interview where he talked about that. I thought it was really interesting. Hey, check this out. A new study came out that showed that CBD improves the perception of your workouts. In other words, a study showed that people took CBD before they worked out. They enjoyed the workout more. Anyway, we work with a company called Ned that makes the best hemp oil products you'll find anywhere, high in CBD, but also high in all the beneficial cannabinoids you find in hemp. In other words, it's full spectrum, and this you can feel. Take it, and let me tell you, 45 minutes, you can tell the difference. Anyway, go check them out and get a discount. Go to helloned.com, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Marcelo from Spain. Marcelo, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. So, so, so crazy to be here. Actually, I'm pretty excited to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so I'm going to read the, my, my question so I can get the, the facts the straight. Okay. Um, I'm a personal trainer here in Barcelona, and I have, um, I have doubts with a trainer, with, with a client of mine uh, that I, I've been training him for a couple of weeks now, or maybe a month and so. And he recently confessed to me that he used to be a woman. Uh, he, he's now he's a 21 years male. And he, he was just initially asking because he's having a hard time feeling his chest uh, in the bench press. Uh, and then he told me about, about the operation and the whole, the whole process. And, and, and now I was like, okay, I know, I, I actually learned a few tricks uh, thanks to you guys, how to activate the chest better, how to, how to, how to feel it better in the, in the bench press. But uh, that just gave me a whole a lot of more questions about how, what should I expect about this client? Uh, because initially the numbers actually didn't make sense to me because I actually calculate the body fat of my clients with the circumference measure to estimate the body fat. And he, as a male, he was in the 12% body fat, like being a, a, small, a small guy, uh, kind of chubby. And as a female, it, it makes more sense because she has 24% uh, uh, body fat. So that, that started, that started my, my question. And I, and I, I just want to uh, know if you guys uh, can think, point me to the right direction but, and how, how, what should I expect with this client? Okay, good question, because we just came out with a new program called Maps Trans. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, here's the deal. You, you, yeah, there's, no, there's no difference whatsoever. You, you, you always train a person as an individual, and men, women, uh, whether you transition or not, there's no difference. There's always individual considerations. So the surgery you're referring to, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the uh, double mastectomy. Um, that could change how the person feels the pack, but it would be no different than if I train anybody who, you know, mentioned that they didn't feel a connection to a muscle, I would still use the same techniques um, and form to try to, to connect. The body fat percentage, now that's an interesting one because men and women, um, you know, biological men and women store body fat differently. Now going on hormones will change that a little bit, but not 100%. So if you did like a skim fold measurement and used the, the, uh, the numbers that you would get off of a biological male, it would measure differently because men tend to store body fat differently than women do and vice versa. So that's a little yes. different, but whatever measurement you use, stick with it. And what you're looking for are trends. You know, the, the total number doesn't make as much of a difference or is not as important as are we going up or are we going down, which will tell us a lot about whether or not we're being successful. But as far as the workout's concerned, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care if I have a man, woman, old person, young yeah. person. It doesn't matter because I'm looking at them as an individual. I'm looking at their technique. I'm looking at their movement. I'm looking at their muscle recruitment patterns, their strength, how they feel. And whether or not they're, you know, male, female really doesn't matter um, because, again, it's always down to the individual. Is this person okay. having a hard time activating the chest? Is that uh, primarily the issue or what What are you experiencing? Well, uh, the the initial question from from him was was, was just that yeah that he was he was having trouble feeling the chest in the in the bench press. Uh, we already take the the second measures uh, in, in in the in the checking, and and he, he he's progressing. Uh, uh, but 
I, I give you some, some initial tips, the, the, the practice that, that Adam mentioned uh, about doing the, the, the flies in the floor with the foam roller in the back and oh, doing yeah, some initial, in, initial, initial priming in the chest. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm hoping that that, that that will work. But, but yeah, yeah, just in, is, is, it, it was just that the, uh, the whole, like another muscle, another exercise, he feels he feels uh, like like normal, and and actually learn learn that from from you guys like to train everyone like an individual. I train I train girls like really like really heavy. Uh, I, I actually had a lot of success with that, but I also know like in these couple of years I've been a trainer that the that, that the body changed changed differently. Uh, like well, like women used to like 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 salsa. Uh, used to store fat more more in the in the legs and the, in the glutes and all, and I'm just worried about about the guy because my initial in the initial cons consultation I already told them that what what we should spend what we should be like we have a like a, like, like like a plan for for that and how his body may progress and now I feel like I should I should break it to it like maybe his body still is gonna react like 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 a like like, like a woman. Because he, he actually moves a lot like a woman. He actually yeah. had the, the, the legs of, 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 uh, of a woman uh, and, and the glutes are really tight. And actually, and, 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 and a plus, <laughs> like, like a, um, a difficult more question is that he's going through the testosterone therapy. And so I guess, I, I guess we should, we should, we should, we should expect a lot of change, like more than normal change for the like for, for a normal client. Uh, so I just want to know if I if, how 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 would I manage that I uh, information with him? Okay, so expectations. Mm. This makes a lot of sense. But again, I'm going to go down to the individual. But let's talk about generally speaking. Generally speaking, biological men are going to build muscle faster yeah. than biological women, even if a woman is on testosterone. A woman on testosterone, she'll build muscle faster than if she wasn't on testosterone. But typically, she's not going to build muscle like a biological man that's natural. This is just uh, a fact. So you may say something like this, like, yes. well, because of your biology, um, you're probably going to expect to build muscle a little slower. But to be honest with you, again, it goes down to the, to the individual. Because if I was training a guy, and let's say they're a biological male, and, and I'm noticing the progress is the, whatever the progress is, well, that's the way their body's progressing. I wouldn't need to explain it away by saying, you know, your male, female, ectomorph, mesomorph, you know, good yeah. genetics, bad genetics. Uh, you know, it really doesn't matter. It's always going to be down to the individual um, when you're training the person. So at the end of the day, because they're working with you as a trainer, you're watching them. You're watching their progress. You're watching how they're progressing, what they're commenting on, how they feel and, you know, the movements and stuff like that. And that's what's going to dictate your workouts, uh, not, you know, what their their gender is or what their biology is. Okay. 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 Great. That that leave leave a, a wave of my shoulders actually. Yeah. No because, problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Marcelo. Thanks for oh. calling in. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? By the way, that's a great program for trainers. Yeah, for sure. Oh, beautiful. Uh, I have it. I have it before. Um, um, break, break, break it out with with a, with a, with, a, with a call. <laughs> uh, before, no, yeah, I have Prime Prime Pro. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still. I, 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 all all the programs actually they really help me with with every every kind of client that I that, that I got. So yeah. All right. Yeah, I, awesome. I, I really thank you. I really thank you guys. Thank you so much for your time and. This is crazy to me, actually. Uh, I kind of want to keep it professional, but I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You got this, man. Thanks You're for calling good. in, man. We appreciate yeah. the support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got right, it. Marcel. How long do you guys think before the fitness industry actually does come out? Oh, with a program? With programming like that, around like that. Specifically? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you know, they already market to women, you know, fitness for women, fitness for men, fitness for, you know, they, always, they like to categorize There's a people. money angle there somewhere, yeah. they'll find it. For yeah. Sure. But, yeah, it's just that that group has to grow big enough to yeah. where it makes sense. As right. soon as it does, though, they will. Yep. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's, no, there's no doubt. But yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, it's uh, this is no different than when we would get questions like, you know, what are better exercises? Yeah, men and women. For men, for same, women. Regardless. So. It doesn't matter. If I get a client and they're, I don't care if they're male, woman, and whatever and they say i want to work on this i want to work on that and i watch yeah. the move and that's what i look at well it sounded like he was looking for the words 
to me. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I, I think yeah. he, I think he's listened enough to understand that he's already doing the right things yeah. Yeah. Uh, with him. I think the thing that he was looking for was how do I communicate that yeah. to him and let him know that like, hey, you, you might be progressing slower because of these. Now, reasons what was interesting, which is true, is your biology does. Uh, I mean, largely, this is almost always true. Well, but storing not always, fat for sure. How you store body yeah. fat? I remember years ago, I had a trainer, brand new trainer. Back then, we used to do skinfold testing, and there was one for women and one for men. There were points for women and points for men. Yeah, He tested this woman and used the male measurements, uh -huh. and her body fat percentage came back some crazy number, yeah. and he couldn't figure it out because she looked lean. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, yeah. you're, doing, the wrong spots. you're doing upper pec, you know, yeah. panchu or test or whatever, which is going to work for women. So we had to switch it, and then it made more sense. But yeah, when you're, when you're working out, it's all about your individual body. That's what you pay attention to. Really nothing else. Our next caller is Alexandra from New Mexico. Alexandra, how can we help you? Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for taking my, my call, my question. I'm super nervous. So I typed in my question just so I don't forget. <laughs> no problem. Um, I feel, um, well, thank you. Thank you guys for everything that you guys share. I, I'm a true, true fan here. I probably have everybody annoyed with because I just talk about you guys all the time. <laughs> but I don't care. Thank you. Sweet. Um, Keep it up. So um, I feel lightheaded every time I squat. Um, I started your programs back in July of last year. And my squatting hasn't, my weight hasn't changed. It's been 115. My volume has changed. It, it was, it used to be four reps. My max one, 115 for four reps. And I can do eight to 10 reps now. But I already did anabolic. I already did performance. I'm currently in aesthetic phase three. I do feel a lot of gains. Well, not a lot, but I feel my my upper body, it's it's better than it was before. But I do not feel like my muscles have, have grown in my lower body. And I thought, okay, if I want more muscles, I also need to squat more weight. And like I said, I've been stuck at the same weight, which is 115. Um, I was wondering if you guys can help me because... I don't want to, I feel like I cannot increase my weight because every time I squat, I feel like headed. And it's like, I have to do uh, maybe like four reps and I have to stop and I have to breathe. And then I continue with my rest. Okay. Good question. Of First of all, you did get stronger because yeah, you you're did, doing yeah. 115 for twice as many reps. That's a big, that's a big improvement. So uh, 115 for four, now you can do eight. So you did get stronger, which means you probably likely built a little muscle, but let's address the lightheadedness when you're squatting. That usually comes from one of three play, three areas. So I'll ask you the first question. Do you normally, when you get your blood pressure checked, is it normally low? No, it's always been good. Okay. So, so blood pressure is normal. Yes. Okay. And then do you consume carbohydrates in your diet or are you on a low carbohydrate diet? No. So after listening, after all your advice, I'm trying to do like a cheat sheet. And I started my bulk from July all the way to December. My average calories were, I got them up to uh, 2000 average. I mean, that's, that's a good bulk for me because I was used to, I'm, com I'm coming from 1,200 calories, 1,300. So it okay. was very low. It used to be very low. Wow. So I, I got my, my calories all the way to 2000 thousand and then my protein used to be about a hundred 118 the most i did was 131 and then my carbs um the most i did was 198 average okay, okay well that's good the other one i would normally say is sodium but you're noticing the lightheadedness only when you squat so there's something that happens yes. okay so this is this is interesting because i've had clients like this when they squat or deadlift those are the two exercises they'll notice what can happen when you do a full body exercise that requires a lot of exertion like a squat is you get this temporary spike in blood pressure when you're exerting yourself. And then when you get to the top of the squat, the blood pressure tends to rebound by dropping below baseline. So you get this blood pressure spike, then it gets this drop and people tend to get lightheaded at the top of the movement. So there's a couple things that I found that can help uh, people, or there's one thing in particular I found that can help people like this. When you do your squat and you come up to the top of the rep, Continue to brace your core and, tr and continue to keep your legs tight. What you don't want to do is exert yourself, come up uh, and relax a little bit at the top because that could cause that blood pressure to drop. So when you come up to the top, kind of stay tight at the top and the core and legs so that the blood pressure doesn't drop too low. 
see if that makes a difference in, in the lightheadedness that you feel. In my experience, that helped, I guess, uh, I'd say about 70, 80% yeah. of the people that notice this. I'd be curious to see your breathing patterns as well. And this is something I, I try not to like coach as much with when people are bracing um, because it, it can be a distraction. It could actually make you know uh, it worse in terms of like the, the rhythm of it. Uh, but if you're finding that like when you get up, you need to like get a, a breath after you're done with your rep, um, I would... I would try to breathe through your teeth, I think is one of the cues in terms of like exhaling. Um, so that way I'm still tight and I'm bracing, but I'm still getting those breaths in. So I don't know if you're holding your breath at all. That might contribute. Yeah, you could be a chest breather, right? So I, you, some value. I think that's a good point, Justin. Maybe get on. Uh, I don't think we actually have one. Do we have one in our youth? That's maybe a, a thing we should do. Do we have a, a breathe? Do we do it? I don't think so. I think I thought Stephanie, Stephanie did one on there. I don't know, maybe. but you can get on YouTube and find like, you know, uh, uh, breathing exercises for uh you know learning to to breathe properly when you're lifting and follow follow whatever probably the, I'm sure the top video will be on YouTube Andrew could probably search it while we're talking right now the other thing that that may be of value to you is adding a little bit of of hit cardio post workout uh two or three times a week to maybe potentially uh work on your cardiovascular endurance so are you doing any sort of cardio right now at all no so it, is it because light, of your advice, is yeah. it lightheadedness, like sudden lightheadedness, or is it that you're exhausted? No, 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 I'm not exhausted. It's yeah. just that yeah. I know that when I'm and I'm trying to, I do practice my my breathing. So whenever I go down, I breathe, uh, and then when I, I exhale, when I go up, okay, and okay. I still feel lightheaded. I That's my weight has been, I, I haven't been able to increase it, and I don't do cardio because I don't want to lose my little gains that I have. Okay. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, walk. I, I, so we did have a video on how to breathe. Uh, so we'll send that to you. Ben Pollock did one, but when you, when you will go down and you breathe out, cause you're exerting that exertion causes a temporary rise in blood pressure. And then, like I said, what happens to some people is when they get to the top of the rep and they relax a little bit, the blood pressure drops down low enough below baseline to where you start to get a little dizzy mm -hmm. and lightheaded. So what you want to do is stay tight the entire time. And when you breathe out, you want to breathe out, just as said, through the teeth. Another way to say it is to breathe out through the back of your throat. In yoga, they call it, I think, a ujjayi breath, where it's, mm -hmm. it's like you're, it's like this this <laughs> this controlled breath that comes out. It's not a it's not like a, a relaxed breath. So when you breathe out, and then at the top, stay tight in your core, stay tight in your legs. See if that makes a difference. Then go into the next rep. See if that makes a difference. Like I said about, I, I had quite a few clients that experienced. They were all female, by the way, which was really weird. But uh, about eighty percent of them. This technique completely cured the problem. And it was always with either deadlifts or squats. I almost never mm -hmm. got it with anything else. It's definitely part of the bracing, uh, you know, tends to affect this. So yeah, try, try that out. Yes, because with, I feel good with the deadlift and my deadlift did increase from, well, a little from 135 to 148 from July to now. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I would stay tight in your core, tight in your body at the top of the rep. So think to yourself to, to keep, keep the muscles to maintain your blood pressure high. Don't don't allow yourself to have this like relax almost at the top where you're you're, you're exerting and then there's this this kind of relax at the top that causes that that rebound in blood pressure. So I I would try that okay. out and I would like to put you in the forum because I'd like to hear about the same thing. I'd yeah. like to hear if this is working for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. I would well, appreciate that. All right. We'll put you in the forum and then let us know. Try it out. Try this technique out and see if it helps. Should I also try the cardio as well? Do one first. Do what Sal's saying first, uh, and see if that improves. If that doesn't, then I would then I would try some twelve minutes of hit cardio three times a week post workout. And while you're doing it, the idea is to work on your breathing, real deep breaths into your nose, and try and calm your heart rate while you're doing cardio cardiovascular training. Okay, perfect. I will. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Alexandra. Yeah, this will happen to some people. I can't remember the term of it, uh, the, the, but some people will get this standing up. They'll be on the floor. Mm. They'll stand up, and they'll start to get lightheaded. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's it's, That's, it's normally blood pressure related yeah. though, when it's that though. No? It is, but uh, I had uh, I remember one woman in, in particular when we deadlifted and squatted. This kept happening, and so then I would have her brace the entire time. Yeah, and it it, it fixed the problem. And, and like I said, I've had several clients like this, and it, it made a big difference. And you could test this. You could go to the doctors; they'll test your blood pressure. They'll have you lay down and stand up, 
and mm-hmm. see if they notice that that yes, effect. Yes, the, the rapid up and down Correct. movements too that really affect that. Our next caller is Shelby from Canada. Hi, Shelby. How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. All right. Good. Um, so I'll just start with my question and then kind of give a little bit of a background. I have high cortisol levels. I got them tested recently. I've been working with a naturopath for about a year. And I was kind of wondering what I can do activity wise to help like manage that without making it worse. So, um, I'm a student, uh, yeah, here, let's look at my notes. It's probably easier. Um, I've been a student for a year, uh, in a medical program. So I'm in class about six days a week. And then I have about a year until I'm done the program itself. And it's super intense keeps me really busy and it makes it so I'm more sedentary than I was when I started the program, but my stress levels are incredibly high. So I wasn't surprised when I got my cortisol testing back and it said that I was sitting at a higher level, but now I'm just trying to figure out what I can do to manage that um, outside of my other pillars, like my nutrition, sleep, and then other relaxation methods that I'm trying to incorporate back into my life. Um, so I was just hoping to get a little bit of, a little bit of assistance from you guys. Yeah, good question. Are uh, are you, are you, is your is your naturopath looking at your gut health as well? Because oftentimes there's some gut health issues associated. Yeah, so that's the first thing that we actually work through. Um, I've been working with them, like I said, for about a year. So that that's been a protocol that I've been on for I'd say like nine months. Once we kind of figured out what we wanted to work through, and now that they're comfortable with where my gut health is, and I'm comfortable. Now we've worked into more like adrenal testing and okay. started with my cortisol levels. And that's, that's where I'm at. Okay. With exercise, when it comes to um, symptoms of high stress or, or, you know, inability to deal with stress, which cortisol, high cortisol tends to be one of those things. Um, you want to do forms of exercise that are recuperative and rejuvenating. You don't want to do forms of exercise that are forcing adaptation or causing more stress uh, to your body. So you're going to avoid hard, exhausting workouts. Okay. Okay. Walking is excellent. Nothing intensive. Yeah. Walking is excellent. Strength training can be great as well, but just not a lot of it. In fact, I would have you do a full body workout once a week and I would have you do one exercise per body part. I would keep your intensity moderate at best. So the goal is just to kind of get better at the movement, practice the exercise and then I do things like walking and yoga for other forms of activity and exercise. Um, and, you know, they're good for you, but they're not going to overwhelm your body's uh, stress adaptation. Um, those, are the, those are the big things from an exercise perspective, perspective because they're already handling your diet. They're looking at your sleep. Mm-hmm. You looked at gut health because um, those are the places I would look at stimulant use. Things like caffeine can affect mm-hmm. uh, cortisol. Um, those are all the things I would look at if you were my client. But from a purely exercise perspective, you want to train yourself so that you feel good before, during, and after the workout. We're not trying to make you like push you, make you sweat. We're not trying to beat you up. It's like I'm trying to go into the workout and take care of myself. So it's going to be more of a recuperative type of uh, of model with exercise. Walking is going to be the best. Yeah, walking and especially outdoors if you can, and you get sun and you get all the other benefits of being outside in the fresh air. Um, and it also just being in nature helps to kind of lower those stress levels and get your mind outside of that, like constant spin of, uh, you know, inundating it with what you're trying to do with school and everything else. Um, but really take this time as an opportunity to, um, you know, go through and, and, and work through all your joint health and, and, and range of motion and, um, you know, make sure that you're countering a lot of these fixed positions that you're in all day long too. If you're seated a lot, like, you know, expressing that full extension, um, and to, to also make sure that your shoulders are functioning properly. And so, you know, just a few of those that you can kind of ritualize uh, throughout the day at any given moment, um, just expressing movement and getting that kind of blood flow is going to help a lot with that restorative kind of approach. That's really helpful. Thanks guys. Um, just one quick follow-up question on that. So I have maps anabolic and prime and prime and a whole slew of other programs. And I kind of bounce in and out of them as I find myself at the gym. If I wanted to like scale one of the programs that I have down to be able to do like a full body one day a week, plus just more mobility sessions, what, how would you guys kind of 
fold those together. You know, actually, I would have you do MAPS 15. Yeah. That's the program I'd have you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 15 minutes a day, use a suspension trainer. You don't even have to go to the gym. You have I, I think that would be ideal for you. And keep the intensity moderate. That would be perfect. That would be better than one full body workout a week. That's really convenient because I have Matt's suspension too, and I have a suspension trainer there at home, so that makes it so I can like in between studying. Good. I'm going to send you Matt's 15. Suspension is perfect. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Doing. Thank you so much. Follow that program. <laughs> do nothing else. And if you want to add anything, just like this is just walking. And, and the way I would use walking would be to mm -hmm. break up your day. That would be the best way to do it in a way that's recuperative. Not all at one session. Don't like an hour and a half walk once a day, but rather 30 minutes here, 20 minutes there, 15 minutes there, you know, something like that. That'll be the most... That's the most effective way to use walking as a way to improve your stress level. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. I just kind of want to coast and manage my health up until I'm done this program. And then I can kind of get back into more consistent training. Because at this point, my mental capacity is so focused on school. I can't focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, China. Well, yeah. Well, thanks, Shelby. Good luck. We'll send that to you. Thanks, guys. You got it. All right. Yeah. I, you know, it's important to communicate when you're body's overwhelmed with stress exercise or more exercise is just it'll it'll not only not work yeah. it'll send you backwards that's just the bottom line our next caller is yvonne from texas yvonne what's happening how can we help you hello guys how's it going good 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 man so my question is i'm a medical technician in the air force i work inpatient at a hospital i'd like to know what i can do to keep my mental health from going down the drain because of a sleep on a night shift schedule, uh, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I'm part of organizations and groups that hold meetings and events during the day, so I often have to stay up late or wake up early, often in the middle of the day, around 12 p.m. But that messes with my sleep schedule. I'm constantly battling the issue of sleep. Any, ins any insight on my situation would be great. What's your training look like right now? Are you lifting? Uh, I am, yes. What's it look like? How many days a week? Hour sessions? Like, what's the programming? Give me an idea of what we're doing. So I've ran anabolic twice. I've ran performance once. I'm on my second run through of aesthetic. Um, I try to go when I can. Uh, so I work a two on two off schedule. So I do have days off. And on those days off, I like to go. And that's probably one of the main things that helps with my sleep but the workouts are complete garbage because I can't get enough sleep. Yeah. You're, you're so aside from getting more sleep, um, you need to work out less. Yeah. Mass yeah. aesthetic is too much for you. Yeah. Unfortunately, because so, so being sleep deprived, there's not much we can do about that besides trying to facilitate more sleep and rest from an exercise perspective. It's just going to add more stress to your body. Now you don't want to do any zero activity, because some activity is recuperative as well. But a, even MAPS anabolic is going to be too much for someone like you. I would go MAPS 15 minutes, and that would be the workout program I'd put you on. And that you should start to feel better on. But honestly, the big thing is going to be getting more sleep. And, you know, you look pretty young, so you can probably yeah. get away with it a little bit now. But it's a, it's a you know, uh, it, it's really, really hard to get around. And over time, it can cause some serious health issues. So over time, you're going to mm -hmm. want to try and find ways – to get more sleep, but adding lots of workouts is going to, is going to be um, detrimental. It's just going to be too much. How are you handling sleep on your days off? Are you trying to also like kind of mirror it to your work schedule in terms of like sleeping during the day and kind of staying up? Or are you actually like showing completely off? Yeah. I'm trying to, I try to keep to that 7 PM to 7 AM okay. schedule just because I, uh, if I don't, then I'm exhausted at work. Right. And, uh, I just end up falling asleep on my lunch shift or on my lunch break. So, but that's not, that's not really my issue is because the day on the days off, I, I often have to go to some kind of seminar, some kind of meeting, some kind of events. Mm. And I have to do that during the middle of the day. So I end up getting maybe three or four hours of sleep yeah, total. Brutal. You get time to do you get, do you, are you able to take naps? I can. I uh, just don't know a proper way to kind of like, utilize naps. Um, when you can. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, studies will show that less than five hours a night of sleep contributes strongly to, to mental health issues like anxiety, right. depression, uh, paranoia, and sometimes even worse. 
So, so getting sleep when you can would be the number one priority. Even if it's a 10 to 15 minute nap mm -hmm. in your car, that's going to help. As far as exercise is concerned, I wouldn't have you do anything more than maps 15 minutes. That's yeah. it. Anything more than that is going to just tax your body too and much. And I'd even modify it on the days where you feel taxed. Like if you, because it's it's designed for you to do basically 15 to 20 minutes every day when you're lift, or, and when you're working and you have a, a long day like that. I think movement's good. So going through the movement, but then regressing the intensity, yeah. going real lightweight, just kind of going through it. So you uh -huh. get some exercise. And then on the days off or days that you do feel good and rested, then you can ramp up the intensity, kind of get after the workout. But yeah, I think MAPS 15 is, is the answer, bro, because you, anything more than that with everything you got going on is just, it's making it harder for you. Do you take any supplements? Uh, I take creatine. Okay. There's two supplements that may help you, okay, that help the body deal with stress. The first one's ashwagandha, and the okay. second one is rhodiola. Rhodiola is a little stimulatory. Ashwagandha is more relaxing. So I would use rhodiola towards the beginning of the day, ashwagandha later in the day. Both have been shown in studies to help the body deal with stress. Now, they're not going to fix what's going on, but they may help you a, a little bit. So those two supplements I would look into as well. They're both in uh, um, Organifi green juice and red juice, right? Yeah, so you green can, juice has the ashwagandha. The red juice has the rhodiola. rhodiola. Yep. And I love those for that. So I, I, I like the idea. I love that idea. Okay. Awesome. All right, man. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. You got it. Well, good luck. We'll uh, send you Mass 15 if you don't have it. Awesome. I just want to thank you guys for uh, all the content that you put out. I know everybody does it, but uh, it's a bit of serenity in a unbalanced schedule that I have. Uh, so. you, you got it, man. You got it, man. Keep, up, keep right. up keep up the work, and hopefully you can get out of that crazy schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it changes its <laughs> Hang in there, big you. dog. Yeah. All right. I appreciate it. You thank you. It. All right, man. Yeah, that, that's uh, brutal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they do studies on... <sighs> You know what they say? Do you know how hard it'd be to do that it's too? Carcinogenic. At that, at that, you know, yeah. you you think at that age it's it's easier or be better because you're young, but and and sure, physiologically that's true. But man, being imagine being in your twenties and like that's like you have to. That's your life. Yeah, yeah I know. Like you ain't hanging out with nobody. He must be working towards something, you know, because because yeah. that's crazy. But yeah, they show less than five hours a night uh, is uh, mental health issues yeah. start to pop up. I mean all the way to almost psychosis levels. Like, yeah. It's, I mean, it's not good. Hey, look, I got a newborn at home. I know what that feels like. So, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but yeah, when you're like that, it's like, you know what? Adding I, exercise is not even a good idea. You know what? I didn't even think to ask him if he had the ability, because maybe he has a place at his work. Uh, Cause I don't know what the shifts look like in that, those long ass shifts that he's got going on. If he has an ability to like hang a suspension trainer somewhere yeah. and, you know, get little micro yeah. doses of working like out. One through, set here. Yeah. Yeah. While, there, while yeah. he's working trigger session would probably kind of be style. the yeah. most beneficial way. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, if he has that flexibility. So if you listen to this, Yvonne, and you have the ability to do this where you can do you can even these break up the 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in these little micro dose workouts with a suspension trainer or something throughout the day while you're working. I, I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah, my, when I was a, when I was a kid, my dad worked uh, because my parents were trying to make it. He would work two jobs, you know, same job, but two like job sites or whatever. And he used to, I was like, how did you make that happen? He goes, I would literally go sleep in the, in the truck for 10 minutes mm -hmm. when I felt like I just couldn't make it anymore and then go back to work and then go back and take another nap for 10 minutes. So every little bit matters. That's in right. That kind of an environment. That's so. right. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have fitness guides that can help you with a lot of different fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mind pump, Justin. I am at mind pump to Stefano and Adam is at mind pump, Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was hardest. for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.